When someone you know has been totally wrong, why can't they admit it? Stay tuned and we'll find out. So admitting being wrong is kind of difficult for a lot of people. Um, let's think about some examples, right? So let's think about the politics example. Uh, our current US President Donald Trump does not admit when he's wrong, ever. He could be totally wrong and just will fail to admit it, and that's kind of a problem. Uh, let's think about romantic relationships. You're in a relationship with your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your husband or your wife, and one of you does something wrong, but none of you are willing to admit that you did anything wrong. What kind, of, what kind of problems that lead to? Animosity, right? Um, let's think about the workplace, right? You forget to turn in work. And then your boss asks you, did you do it? And you say, yeah, but you didn't do it. Or the big one, ah, let's talk about social media. So on social media, I bet you have a lot of friends out there and they post a lot of nonsense. And you're like, dude, you're totally wrong. Why can't you just, you're, you're, not, you're not correct in this one. You're kind of wrong. And they won't admit when they're wrong. So Admitting when you're wrong is kind of a big deal, and that leads to, well, why? So let's talk about the first reason why people can't admit when they're wrong. Is, well, it's, it's ego, it's, it's self-esteem. And whenever you call somebody else out and say, you know, you're wrong, it's actually a threat to their ego. So when someone's ego is threatened, they're going to reject it. They're going to say, no, I'm, because we're all egotistical, right? We all have this sense of like, this is me, this is who I am. But when you threaten that, when you say, look, you're wrong, you're actually threatening their ego. So that, that people don't like that, right? Another thing is that, well, when it comes to self-esteem, it's a misperceived weakness. And I think that's where the politics part comes in, right? So when you say you're wrong, it's misperceived as weakness that you think it is. Like uh, people, people don't openly say, ha, you're wrong. I, I got you, right? We don't normally do that. Um, but from the receiving side, it feels like, oh, I don't want to look weak to other people, so I won't admit when I'm wrong. And I think that's why politicians do it too. They won't admit when they're wrong because they could, it, it's perceived as weak. In fact, if it's Russia uh, or, or other countries, first world countries, you know, admitting that you're wrong to, as, as a world leader is very damaging to your political career. So that's why they don't admit when they're wrong. Well, let's think about, um, let's think about something called mental rigidity. So with mental rigidity is saying that, you know, mental rigidity is someone that refuses to change their beliefs. And we see this a lot in religious people. Someone who's deeply religious, they, they believe in their God and they believe their God made the world or, or they believe their God did this or they believe their God is, is, is the reason for their being. They're mentally rigid because that's their firm belief. That's their anchor point. But it's also terrible if they're like an anti-vaxxer or a flat earther. These people believe in, in, in conspiracies. They believe that vaccines cause autism. By the way, vaccines don't cause autism. Nobody knows what causes autism. And, and people that believe the earth is flat, like do we need more science to prove the world is round? No. But people believe from faulty studies or from other people that are mentally rigid that they are they're correct in saying, yeah, the world is flat or whatever. That, that doesn't make any sense, right? But that leads to the, the, the second, the third point, which is, well, it is um, mental insecurity. So a mentally insecure person doesn't have the education or the critical thinking ability to look up answers for themselves. They're so insecure of their own mental weakness and their, their own education level that they're willing to believe what someone else says as true because they don't have the ability to go look up the information for themselves, right? So if you had a friend tell you something sensational, maybe you should just kind of look at it for yourself and figure out if it's correct or not. Right, um, th so they have, they're mentally insecure, um, and that's the reason for school. This is the reason for education is, is to kind of build yourself up from this mental insecurity. You want to know, and that's why you attend school. That's why you learn. That's why you look at answers for yourself. And the final reason is uh, legal. Now, I think the legal ramification is that you don't want to admit when you're wrong, especially if you're uh, the subject of pending litigation. Right, so if someone's suing you, or you're suing somebody. Yeah, you don't want to admit when you're wrong. Like in a car crash, the first thing your insurance company tells you is not to admit fault, right? And I think that's the only reason you wouldn't admit when, when you're wrong or when you're at fault is when you're in a legal battle that could, could cost you a lot of money. So self, we talked about self-esteem, mental rigidity, and mental insecurity. And those three things are things that you can definitely change. Uh, the legal part, yeah, I think you're kind of, you're kind of stuck on that one. So let's talk about being a confident person. So a confident person is the opposite from someone who, who can't admit when they're wrong. 
So what are the marks of a confident person? Well, a confident person is uh, mentally flexible. They're able to say, yeah, you know what? I think I can change my mind on this. I'm not firmly, I don't firmly believe that this is true. I can change my mind. They have mental flexibility and they also have mental security. They have education. They have the ability to go look up answers for themselves. They don't have to be stuck in this one thought mind. They can say, you know what? I'm going to find these answers because I don't know if this is true or not. So I'm going to go look it up. Um, that's, you know, that's good mental security. That's, that's solid education. And you can only really get that from, from education, from repeated experience in education saying like, I know where to find answers. I know how to look stuff up online. Uh, I know how to search the library correctly, I guess. And then they take responsibility. So a confident person takes responsibility for negative actions. So if something bad happens, they're going to say, you know what? I accept responsibility for it and I'll make it better. So a confident person doesn't just say, I take responsibility and I'm done. They have to take responsibility, then turn that around into good action, meaning, well, this is terrible. Let's try to solve these problems together. So confident people say, tell me your, so have you ever watched like a really good manager or, or if you have a really good friend or a really good manager that, or a really good teacher that has helped you out, they'll ask you, it's like, what are your thoughts? Tell me what you think. Let's try to work out a solution based on what you think, right? A confident person is mentally flexible. A confident person uh, is mentally secure and a confident person knows how to take responsibility for themselves. So let me ask you these, these oh, let's, let's talk about moving the needle. Let's talk about moving the needle on, on, on people that, are, that can't admit fault. And I got this from um, a Fast Company article. And the first thing you want to do if you want to try to help someone that's, that can't admit when they're wrong is first thing you need to do is decide. You need to decide whether this is worth your time. Right, so is it worth trying to help them out in the first place? Are they so stuck that they can't be helped, or do you think like, look, this is a good friend of mine. I should, I should try to help them out. And so you need to decide whether you want to do this or not, because once you, once you put both feet in, yeah, you're in it, right? The second thing you need to do is ask them why. Ask them why they came to that conclusion in the first place. Like, why did they, why did you think that the world was flat? Why did you think that vaccines cause autism? And let them explain why, right? Don't just cut them off immediately. Let them explain all the reasons why, uh, why they thought the way they do. And, and, and don't, you know, be a good listener. Then give them other options. So give them other options means like if they say like the world is flat because, you know, uh, uh, some rapper told me it's flat or I watched a video that said it was flat, then give them other options to consider, you know, give them options that they can understand. For example, don't give them options that's, that are highly mathematical and they don't understand the math, right? Don't do that. Give them options in a language that they can understand that is empathetic, which is the last point, is you wanna lead with empathy. So you want to be, um, you wanna be, you, you know that someone's ego takes precedence. And this is from the article and it said, um, for other people, if, if their ego takes precedence over the facts, then they want, then they don't care about the facts. They just want to win, right? Let me say that again. If their ego takes precedence over facts, then they don't care about the facts. They just care about winning. And if they just care about winning, then that's, that's going to be really hard for you to change their mind because all they want to do is win, right? It doesn't matter if they're wrong. They just want to win this argument. So here's some questions for you. How would you correct someone that's wrong? Uh, and what are times that you've been wrong that you didn't want to admit it? I've been wrong plenty. I've been wrong so many times. And this is a good cathartic process to kind of think about how you're going to admit um, when you're wrong, right? Okay. Thanks for watching. So we get ideas for shows based on messages you send on Instagram and at the camcast. We get uh, a lot of uh, comments. We get emailed comments a lot. And if you'd like to talk about something, why don't you send us a message and maybe this will be a show idea one day. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.